Hey, what's up guys? This is Oakley and we're going to be in Rome 2 Total War Patch 15, which I know is something you guys desperately wanted to see. So I'm going to be Epirus. My opponent is Mastodon. Now take note, I am not quite home yet. I'm actually um, forced to be using my brother's Rome 2 and his computer. So pardon the audio and video qualities and if there are any issues that arise, sorry I don't have my setup that I'm used to, but hopefully I can get out my impressions of the patch to you. So first and foremost, let's get started. The patch itself is mostly going to be broken down to a couple features. There's a lot of big changes, but the main one is going to be battles will last longer. This is mostly due to the fact that you're going to be seeing infantry with more armor, cavalry that don't have as much striking power, and then also the more pronounced eminence, I would say, of hoplite units. So hoplites before, no one would ever really bring them, but now they're actually pretty good. And I see a lot of people using them. Some people are saying they're even maybe overpowered. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Hoplites are mostly good because they have good staying power now with the longer lasting uh, battles. They have good armor. They trade pretty effectively. And actually, they can in some cases beat swords, which some people are saying is not... Um, very accurate, but I think it is. I mean, if you're playing in a, a Hellenistic kingdom, historically, they focused a lot on hoplites, and then later the Sarissa and spear-armed units, just because they had longer range, but the hoplite is still a core unit, and I'm glad that it means that the Hellenic kingdoms have to rely on some of these uh, hoplite units. In any case, these are going to be some new additional units. I haven't actually been able to find all the new units, but these are Etruscan mercenary hoplites given to Epirus. So very cool unit. I really like these guys. They're sort of the top tier uh, hoplites. And you'll see they perform very well. Top tier hoplites are awesome now in patch 15. Also something to note about hoplites is the fact, or not hoplites, um, what are we talking about? Mercenaries are now capped. So when you go into multiplayer, you can only take a certain number of them. And it's kind of based on the veterancy of the unit you're trying to select. So for instance, you know, top tier mercenaries, you can only get three of them, whereas lower tier you can get maybe four or five, I believe. I'm not sure of the different caps. Uh, this is mostly done to prevent people from having... Uh, perfectly well-rounded armies uh, with the reduction of mercenaries and like unit caps it forces each faction to mostly for the most part rely on its own forces now I think that starts to be a problem when you deal with uh, Carthage which is supposed to have mercenaries so I think that's something they're gonna have to sort out to some degree but mostly it does work uh, cavalry are also less effective than usual but they still are good I think it's better um, to see that change they're a little slower it feels like but they're still good um, it, the fight mostly comes down to the infantry, which lasts a while. Cavalry is still effective in that they can make that fight go quicker and help, you know, curl up the flanks. But they're not all out, you know, infantry massacring units, uh, which I think is good. They're more uh, support supplemental units that don't do well in direct charges. In any case, let's go ahead and go into the tactical view. Now we can talk a bit more about the up close uh details of this fight there's a lot more obviously to patch 15 that i'm talking about this is just going to be my impressions i've never been a total war player who focuses on the stats of each unit i'm sort of vaguely aware of them but i never say oh my guys are you know have five points better attack than them let's engage i'm more about the sweeping strategies that's what i'm going to take the opportunity to talk about in this battle so first and foremost what you'll see is my opponent deploying in the traditional historical um deployment and then also sort of a traditional um, total war deployment being said uh, that is going to be this infantry corps with skirmishers really next to them and then cavalry wings now this is something I would recommend obviously for starting level players but it's not something I think you should do in the future now it's it, it's good as you're starting and even, it can be good for later levels once you're a higher skill player for having you know a compact defense or a compact blitzkrieg uh, rush force but I would recommend you know trying to play as, uh, as I'm doing here. Not that it's the only way, but I find it's very effective. Here I'm just chasing off his cavalry with my own, and I wasn't able to intercept them before I got too close, so you're not missing out on too much. But mostly what I want to talk about, as I said, is trying to use this strategy where you have a lot more mobile units as opposed to just this. Uh, the reason for doing this is because of... Um, the tactical opportunity is provided by any strategic move. So for instance, my opponent has kind of three things he can deal with you know a core and then two flanks so he's limited in his strategic options basically move forward move back attack and retreat so he'll say like for instance oh you know i'm going to move these cav units here and then see how my opponent reacts uh that's just one strategic move and it opens one opportunity because i have so many moving pieces each move that i make 
opens up opportunities. Now it also opens up, you know, potential problems with my own force that my opponent can counter. But I think, you know, if you develop this strategy and you're also on top of your micro and you think ahead of how your opponent could, um, you know, deal with your moves, you can sort of prevent him from exploiting you. And mostly, you know, we have these forces all over the place gets you the surround and the flank and it allows for a lot of opportunities to be exploited so that's why I would recommend this strategy so for instance here I've already surrounded him and he has a flanking force here a flanking force here now I'm gonna counter that and also try and push the center in a couple ways so this flank here I'm gonna deal with it by moving forward with hoplites to put pressure cavalry to try and bait him into those hoplites citizen cav that's gonna pierce through here and then also bring in some Agrian and Axemen to deal with his guys if they try and skirt around my guys, I can catch them. Now in the center, I know I want to put pressure on his archers. Never do archer on archer combat, even or archer on slinger, whatever have you. Don't do that. Go ahead and you know put a cav unit and just charge from the flank first. This will force his guys back and it'll give you guy your guys cover to move up, hopefully get some shots, and then you just pull these guys back. Now That'll allow you, as I said, to get some shots off. And I don't really intend on getting his guys in, you know, maybe if I'm lucky I'll get with him, him with my cav. But I'm just intending to force those guys back. He's going to react with his own calves that pulls them in and opens up me to be able to go around the flanks. And then this unit here is actually going to swivel around and then I'm going to push through here. I'm going to try and sever these guys. So now I've forced him by doing that strike to the center and retreating. I took no losses, mind you. I opened up the opportunity for an attack. I didn't quite get that, but look, it's combined all of his guys in the center. He's getting some parting shots on, but you can see it did no damage. So now I've forced him into a more compact formation. I'm going to exploit that. This guy going around the back, these guys continuing to move on the flank, and then his guys on this flank, I'm going to go ahead and send a cavalry unit to cut that in half. So I'm estranging them from the main army, and then I'm going to try and send, you know, these cav to ward them off. He's going to charge across here, so I'm going to send in some reinforcements. And uh, this unit is now also going to be used not only to threaten this flank, but also to perhaps push back through here. I think that's enough of the strategic view. Let's go and see what this looks like from the battlefield itself. So over here, this is where I position my guys. And I'm anticipating his cavalry are going to want to chase after that. So already, you can see I'm positioning some hoplites for support for those guys to fall back. These Agrian Axemen are surrounded on 360 degrees by hoplites. So that'll allow me the ability to, you know, cover my hoplites. Any cavalry that push through, I can get shots on them. And I'm already pulling some cavalry back through here to help out with these Agrian Axemen. So every time you make a move, know that your opponent is going to react and think two steps ahead. His own guys tried to move up. I was going to use these guys to threaten their flank and false charge them. That forced them back, allowed me to get some shots off without taking any damage. And here I'm going to get sort of caught, but I have my hoplites in position to intercept them. I'm going to get some counter charge with these Agrian and Axemen. On this flank he's charging here, I'm going to absorb that with my Illyrians and then come back in with my Citizen Cav, absorbing that volley. But over here, like I was saying, having these skirmishers nearby is really good for support. So I'm chipping away at his Citizen Cav. He did, um, yeah, two kills. Yeah, just two kills. And by having nearby skirmishers and also the support of these guys up on the hill, I was able to ward back that attack. And all the while, look at the map. I'm forcing him into a smaller position. Now, take a look at this. On the right, he threw two of his guys against one of my Illyrian levies, and I'm going to be able to get a flank attack with my citizen cav that's maximizing their use. And then some companion cav are moving here. I'm going to try and intercept. My opponent realizes his mistake. He's going to pull his forces back and try and reinforce. That's why I have these two archer positions right here. And they're going to intercept and just murder anyone who tries to go for that cross. So I'm forcing my opponent to react to this flank. And anyone who tries to go over to that flank, well, they're going to get a face full of arrows. So, again, it's the concept of thinking ahead and anticipating where your opponent's going to have to go. So you can watch some of these volleys getting off. I'm just picking apart his guys as they come into near, uh, near range. And look at this. He's moving really disorganized, so I'm going to put pressure on this flank. Sweep my cavalry around the sides. He pulled back his cav on that flank to try and help this out. And yeah, he's going to be crushing my levies. And eventually he'll beat my citizen cav. But I'm holding up so many cavalry that's allowing me to, you know, get strikes on the center. Sweep around the flank here. This is very good for me. I'm continuing to target his guys, mostly focusing on his hoplites. And especially his thorax swordsmen. These guys are way down. I'm not wasting my time on the Cretan archers just yet. Mostly because I am concerned with taking out his infantry. Once those guys are gone, then I can charge through here. Take a look at another strategic move that my, my, me and my opponent have done. We have reserved cavalry. So these guys are waiting to charge through here and smack the back of these guys as they're engaged with spearmen. My opponent also has this, and these guys are going to be coming in, charging into the backs of these cab. 
Now this is a risky position for me for a couple um, reasons. One, if he's able to collapse the Citizen Kev unit, he has three whole, basically full strength cavalry forces who can come around and start smacking the backs of my guys and really curling up my line. So that's why I have these two cavalry forces coming around here. My strategic thinking is these guys are, you know, they're collapsing here and he can threaten this entire flank. So I have to do something to pull these guys back into the center and that's going to be going for this juicy target here. It's going to allow me to not only peel off some guys from this flank on the left, but also force these cavalry back. So I'm going to threaten the center. That's going to relieve pressure on my right side. My Thessalian cav got in, knocked out these hoplites and they're going to retreat. My own pikemen are going to sort of push back these cav and over here I'm going to try and intercept. I'm also going to push up the center and put pressure on these guys because I know these cav will probably be intercepted by these cavalry, but at least I'll have forces in the center to force them back. Now my opponent has been chasing me with some uh, cavalry, but look at this. Fire at will mode is definitely working very well. This is something they added of the patch um, where anyone who has you know something like a pillar can actually throw it when enemies get in range. So it means that these cavalry strikes are taking a lot of damage from my Royal Peltus and also Skirmishers. So I'm doing a lot of damage to his cav that's skirted around me. I'm continuing to put pressure on his center. Now this cav unit is in a strategic position to threaten my rear. If I hadn't forced these cavalry to fall back, they could be in the backs of all my forces with some more cav. That would be a big deal for me. Now my own cav units are getting chased back and intercepted. That's fine. They're kind of sacrificing themselves to allow me to get some pressure on his, you know, archers that I'm going to be able to sort of intercept with my guys. And I'm putting the pressure on the front. Look at this with my levy pikemen chewing through some peltis. However, his cavalry is going to come through the back, so I have to be wary of this. That's why I always keep something nearby uh, to intercept cavs. So this is going to be hoplites. Take a look at this. My hoplites are doing very well. They're very sturdy troops and they take almost no damage from the cav charge. So that's why you see a lot of people using them. I just lost two men. So cavalry have to be used in combination with some other unit now. They can't just act independently. Over here, I'm going to get the sandwiching on his hoplites. Over on this flank, his cavalry were forced to retreat. I brought back my Thessalians and they cleaned up the rest of this fight. So I now have this flank secured. Over on here, I'm putting the pressure on his pikemen. He's using the force to his advantage to mitigate the losses, but I'm still sort of cleaning this up. But it's a, it's a good bulwark and a good wall against my forces. Now, the threat comes to him as I start to envelop him on all sides. I did have some citizen cav that got away from this fight, and they were going to help clean up this position. However, I didn't have to. So what they're going to be doing is both these forces are going to come in through here, help to knock out these hoplite units of my opponent. He's at, you know, sort of the same strength as me, 58-58. So these pikemen are going to pull out and they're going to go chase off some of those units. My own guys are going to come in through here. Yeah, a little bit of friendly disruption, but it's going to help me, as you can see here, start knocking out his hoplites. Enemy charges in through here, so it's a bit of a sandwich, but I have this. So it's going to help me clean up and secure the rear of my forces. He now no longer has anything behind my line, so that's going to be good. And my pikemen are going to be the ones pushing forward to intercept these hoplites. My own hoplites here, or pikemen are desperately out of position and they're going to get rear charged by my opponent's thorax swordsman so this is a problem they get way too exposed but at least they're soaking up fire i'm going to sick my own hoplites against him over on this position my opponent is deciding to move out of the forest that's a really bad move on his part because now i can get a lot of shots i think he figured i was out of ammo but my agrianian axemen are going to continue to rack up the kills especially on this uh corner unit here they're going to be taking a lot of upfront damage so it's excellent for me and I'm focusing fire, using my general's ability, really trying to kill them. But my opponent was able to, you know, pin some of my forces down on multiple flanks. And now, look at this. Citizen Cav are going to be coming in the back. They're going to try and intercept my slingers. I'm repositioning guys, you know, here anticipating he's going to swing around, try and intercept this. But my guys were still on skirmish mode, so they, you know, were forced by this guy to run out. That made them go away from my hoplite unit. And that caused a lot of problems because, yep, I can't quite intercept them. And he's going to just massacre my guys here. So he's forced my hoplites back, taken uh, advantage of uh, my uh, lack of mobility, knocked out my slingers, and then he's going to take this opportunity to, once the pressure has been relieved, fall back with his pikes. Over on this flank, my cavalry were able to disengage, and I'm cleaning up his hoplites. So we knocked out this group, the next group is engaged on my own hoplites, and I'm going to do a rear charge with citizen cav into these guys. I'm saving my Thessalian cav to intercept his archers and force them back. And it's going to allow me to land some rear strikes on his thorax swordsman if I get the chance to do that. However, he does still have some companion cav who are, you know, always keeping behind his own lines. And they're going to be, basically their role is going to be limited to engaging with my cav, keeping them from doing just this. So we'll watch this engagement. 
not quite as devastating as you'd see in previous patches, but still pretty uh, pretty impressive. Ari is coming in with foot companions. That's going to definitely clean me up. And it's going to open up the possibility for he to stri him to strike in my back. I landed a strike on his guys here. You can see still they're still in the fight. Previously, this would have obliterated them, and it's going to take a couple cycle charges to get in and out, in and out, and just force these guys back. Now that they're exhausted and very tired, they're going to start crumbling, hopefully soon. But uh, you just see how long the staying power is. Same goes with over here. Over here, this battle was finally wrapped up. But yeah, the battles are lasting much longer. And it's something that before I was able to play the game, people were complaining about saying it was going to be a huge issue. People were saying, oh, it's the death to micro, everything's so slow, there's no strategy. I would say it provides for a lot more strategy because you can hold with cheap units, battles last longer, allows you to maneuver, and this battle, I mean, let's go on the tactical map. You can just see how everything is moving fluidly, and just because the battle's slow doesn't mean the strategy or the, the thought that goes into it is any uh, any more diminished. Here we go. His guys are going to counter charge my own citizen cav. It's going to be pretty brutal on my guys who have lower stats, and yeah, they're going to they're be biting it. So this is going to open up his ability, you know, he's, he's removing my cav, which is a good move. It prevents me from landing rear strikes on his guys, and it's going to allow him to land strikes on the, the backs of my units and really free up all these forces. Looks like we're getting a little bit of lag. I'm going to have to pause this and figure this out, but I'll be back soon. And this should have fixed the issue. There we go, we're back. So you can see his cavalry are going to get these strikes on the rear of my forces and just start obliterating them. So here I am trying to reform on this flank. But uh, my left flank is all but gone. Let's go ahead and watch this from the above view. So he chased off my guys. They somewhat reformed. Uh, no, actually, they were killed. And I'm going to be coming into the center, trying to form up some sort of a defensive line here. Um, but with these freed up cavalry, he can strike the backs of my guys. And sorry, guys, I'm again going to have to uh, pause and fix this. I don't know why it's glitching out on me. Again, I don't have access to the, uh, the normal equipment that I have. So let's go ahead and fix this frame rate. So we're back, and as I said, his cow is going to be, you know, they're exhausted, but now, now is where their true potential comes in for these long battles that would keep slogging on for a while. He can strike the back of that and really free up the majority. Ooh, sorry about that. Now I think I fixed the issue. It was something having to do with disc writing space, but we're back. All right, let's get back into this battle. Enough with the issues. So, oh, okay, that's, this is running much better. So anyways, he's landing all these decisive strikes now that he's, you know, taking uh, away my advantage in cav. And this is really when the battle starts to turn, is when you have lost your cavalry and the troops are diminished. You really want to be the last one standing with cavalry in these terms of fights, because look at this. Came in, crushed my hoplites, who would have otherwise kept that fight up, and it's going to allow these guys to keep on fighting. So Thorax Swordsman's still at 54, and then he cleaned up that other fight there with his own hoplites. And let's go over on this flank. So... My guys here, you don't always have to land a hammer and anvil strike on forces. You can almost always do a hammer and anvil strike with the arrow. So pinning my guys in the front with pikemen. And then following up with an assault in the back with the bowmen. So this is very deadly. It can do a lot of damage to me. Thankfully, I'm using these mercenary Etruscan hoplites who are very, very strong elite guys. I just crushed through the remainder of those pikemen. Those, uh, I mean, keep in mind, those are pretty low quality troops. He was threatening me with cav, but I had my own royal peltas to help ward those guys off. He's going to keep chasing me. This is where I'm going to fall back to the forest and reform within the safety of these trees. Looking at this from a overhead strategic perspective, uh, I do still have some guys here. I'm going to pick them back up later in the battle when I realize they, you know, reformed right before routing. But he's mostly got the encirclement on me. So it's down to these melee brawls. So my guys here, hoplites are being charged from both sides. One side by hoplites, the other by these pikemen. However, I can still threaten him with my royal peltas, so I'm keeping these pikemen from sandwiching me just by the mere threat of the presence of these royal peltas around the flank. However, he's going to keep getting more and more guys into the into the fray. I'm going to intercept with my hoplites. This is something I wouldn't dare to do in previous patches, knowing they'd get cut up. But now I know they can probably most likely... Oh, wait, no, these are, these are royal peltas. Never mind. So heavy infantry, still 120 men. These guys will clean up. So... People are saying that um, swords are irrelevant on the forums and stuff. I, I would say they're not. You're going to see them in smaller numbers, but can still definitely kick ass. Um, my opponent's going to decide to land a cavalry strike. Again, not nearly as effective as you'd think in previous um, patches, but still doing enough to even this fight up. 
over on this flank, my Royal Peltists are continuing to run away because his pikes are, you know, the they have the ability of really massacring my forces. So he's going to go ahead and do a cavalry charge, pin my guys from the front, and then charge in through the back with these spearmen, these pikemen. And that's where actually they're going to start doing a pretty good amount of damage. As my guys are pinned, they're going to start, yeah, there you go. One, two, three, a uh, couple guys going down. And as he moves forward, He's going to start, you know, doing a lot of damage to my Royal Peltas. You can see them starting to drop pretty significantly as he just chews through my shield wall line. Over here, my guys were successful, so Royal Peltas still holding it together. Now they're able to get this sandwich on his hoplites. He's going to have some cav in to try and help out this fight. And in the distance, you can actually see just how long Melly is. This is my um, unit of Etruscan hoplites, and they're fighting against two Mercy Cretan archers, and the battle is still, you know, it's, it's held up. Usually I would massacre those guys, but because the battle lasts so much longer, his guys are able to hold their own. This is mostly going to be down to the down to the wire as his guys were able to force my men back. They decided to reform and try and kill my blob, but now he exposed his rear. So that's going to be essentially the end of the battle, and here I am bringing the rest of my guys. So archers are routing, his guys here, his general is caught on both sides, and I mopped up his calves. So that's going to be it for this battle i hope you guys enjoyed pardon again any lapses in video quality again remember i am away but i wanted to bring you this content as quickly as possible and at least share with you some of the battles uh leave comments below to what you think about the patch so far i'm really happy with it i really like the pace of battle the strategy it uh it provides and also look at this you know this is something you would have seen before is hoplites getting a lot of kills um royal pulses are still very effective Pikemen, not so much. You can see on both sides, Pikemen didn't do very well. And, uh, you know, I think that's something that uh, still does pretty good work. I think most of the killing power will always come in the flanks, and the pikes are merely as a shield to force, you know, opponents to hold, and then you, you hit them on the side. So that's why my opponent got a ton of kills from his companion cav. Um, I, myself, didn't get that many kills. Most of the citizen cav were uh, pinned and overpowered. But the Thessalian cav, who waited and were reserves, they did a lot more damage. I agree, and Axe been doing really well. So overall, I'm really happy with this patch, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Let me know what you think, and I'll be sure to bring you guys more videos in the near future. See ya.